Hey, yo, it's Guido coming out to the Tactics Talk. Welcome back, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and I appreciate your support, all of it. If you look for other ways to do so, you can find them down in the description. I'm front-loading the shilling and the hype, all right? <laughs> Here's Mad Dog the First of his name, Clan GFLC, loaded in with his Carfin, and he is in a same tier battle. Who wants to see Mad Dog get top experience by doing 800 damage? How do you think he does that? This is a subject I bring up quite a bit. I often talk about it on stream because I notice it in my gameplay a lot as well and, and other good players. I often look at it and go, well, that wasn't much of a game. Why am I on the top of the leaderboard? And it generally boils down to getting up in people's faces and winning the game. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how to put more fine of a point on it than that. It's, it's very easy okay as far as the concept goes the execution well it's world of tanks it can be very difficult things working against you rng your teammates the enemy team the setup what tanks are on what side it goes on and on but the basic concept of you get forward in their face play smart and defeat them is pretty solid. It's There's not much more to it, really, at the end of the day, in a basic, giant, macro sense. So we're going to watch Mad Dog. He comes in here. He actually, he's in a Carnarvon, right? Not known as one of the greatest tanks in the game. Here's a secret. It actually is. I think Mad Dog knows this as well. The DPM on this, I think, is the highest for the tier 8s, at least for the tech tree, I believe. It may even be a contender for the highest DPM of any tier 8. Pew Pew Gun. <clears throat> But it shoots really fast and has pretty darn good penetration at 220 with standard and up to 252. That's not great with armor piercing, but the rate of fire in the DPM is pretty amazing. So Mad Dog is a good player, and he's going to get up here and start fighting. Then he's going to find a way, right? He's pl playing against a 703 two-barrel, and he's got a TS-5. These are two really good premium tanks. Very difficult to defeat in a Carfin. Now, what does he start doing? Well, he pins down the TS-5, and he's side-scraping like a boss. Okay? That is a great ankle. Ankle. It's not overextended. When he comes out, he's careful not to let them have too much of his lower plate. And he's got a couple guys back there helping. And actually, if you look at this, look at the ISM. He's a little over-angled, isn't he? Look at the difference in those two angles. He's ever so slightly over-angled and giving them a little bit better shot than they need to be. He's got a defender back there as well. So let's just watch Mad Dog work on these guys and he's just trying to keep goes after that guy can't quite get there takes a hit goes for the lower plate maybe a little bit of a risky move i think you probably would have liked to have had that back but now he gets again onto the inside of the reload of the ts5 pins him down gets some assist damage and down goes the ts5 you notice now he's got his he loaded this 703 is going to be a big problem for him as far as trying to pin, because the 703 is doing a nice job with his side script as well. So he gets the HE out, and he just starts tracking him. He's taking little chunks off of him, so he's not going to win the day but with 40 hit points a blast. But he is going to pin down the 703, who can now no longer react to what is going on on his other side, which is Mad Dog's team's pushing in. So Mad Dog's watching this whole thing happen, and he's just pinning down the 703. 703 can't do a dang thing. And that allows his team to get a bit of an advantage. Is Mad Dog pumping out the DPM? Not really. He's got 94 damage. But this guy is just hating life right now. He simply cannot get his repair kit sorted out fast enough to get unscrewed. All right. So we've got 1,200 assists. And here's another thing good players do. He looks for a little side scrape on the ice 3 because he doesn't want to just drive around and let him have damage. Now watch what Mad Dog does. I just want you to think about it while it's happening. What is he doing? Holy cow. Holy cow. What would most players have done on that first hit? They'd have backed up and run away. I think most players wouldn't have even pushed. They would have let these guys push and see what happens. Mad Dog pushes. Sometimes that gets you killed. It does. But in the main, in the, the long run, over many battles, this kind of gameplay gets you more experience, gets you more credits, gets you more wins. He just pushes in. Of course, what he found out, and he was lucky, noted, got it. 
He didn't get killed. He didn't actually take any damage, but he knows where the Scorpion G and the Su-130 are, right? The Scorpion G and Su-130 are back in there somewhere. So he comes up and he's like, okay, well, now I see somebody. Unfortunately, there's a Senlock over there, which gets a shot on him. So he'll back out. Covers up against anything that might be over there, and then puts his front armor, more or less, I probably would have squared up a little more. Maybe he does so. There we go. He does exactly what I was saying. And squares up against the threat. And now he's just looking for damage. There we go. Progetto puts a little shot into him. Figures that's probably going to get him spotted. Maybe he still was. Did that? Interesting. I guess the Progetto has terrible crew. Didn't actually see him. Looking for a shot on the Scorpion. That's a big kill. Get rid of him. Down he goes. And now he's seen again. Senlak takes a shot. Someone else shoots in. The T-44 takes a shot. I, I don't know, Mad Dog. My only criticism would be right here. I might have dodged down lower. Now that the Progetto is backed up, I don't think you would have shot on you. And if you'd have lowered yourself down here, because they're just shooting at this point straight into where you were. So he takes some more hits. Fortunately, the T-44 didn't take another whack at you. Nope, he did. Never mind. <laughs> Either him or somebody else. I think if you'd have dodged low down right, you'd have changed the azimuth better. But you were keeping the front armor to him. So now Mad Dog's down to low hit points. But he has played aggressively, been up front early on, and created quite the advantage for his team. To a large extent, helping his team win map control on this side of the map. Now it's now it's a big pain because you've got to push into their campers. And this is the another thing I talk about. Here's where, if it's something like this, there's no problem with being a little bit more careful. Especially since he spent a good portion of his hit points helping his team get to this point. To some extent, you're sort of relying on the enemy team. This is why a lot of really good players will advise that you be more cautious early game so that you have the hit points at this point to give up if you need to. But I tell you what, sitting in the back like that all day is just stone cold boring. <laughs> I think Mad Dog subscribes to that gameplay style as well. But just a really nice job. He knows where the Scorpion is, so he's just going to push in against that guy. Most everyone on the team should know generally where he is. Of course, he was spotted, so there you go. I was thinking that that was the stir. Never mind, everyone knows where the hell he is, provided they can look down and right, which is not a given. <laughs> not a given. Look at this. He's got an HE round set up for him. Is he going to nuke him for? What did he nuke him for? Oh, only got 106. That was all that he had, or maybe someone else hit him. We end up with... Two kills, only 825 damage, like I said. We're going to be top experience in the game with 2,984 assists through tracking and spotting, playing aggressively, getting up front. That's up front, getting the spotting, getting the shots. That's where the experience in the credits are in this game, folks. They're not in the back sitting around. Okay, They're not in the back. You have to be really good to be able to sit back and snipe and know when to go forward and use your hit points. The problem is most people who sit back and snap, snap, snip, snap, <laughs> snipe, don't know that. I've got another video where we're going to talk to one of, the, one of the people who sent one in where I talk about this. I don't know if it'll be before this one or after this one, but it's the idea if I sit in a bush and I snipe in a good position, I get some damage, and then not knowing when it's time to move forward. Another thing I'll also talk about is you're never going to learn how to play aggressively like this until you do it. Which sounds like kind of a throwaway comment or sounds just ultimately stupid, but it's true. And a lot of people get pummeled trying to do that and they give up on it and then they sit back. But as you get better and get your mechanics down, and that's usually the problem, they get pummeled for two reasons. One, they don't know really how to push or where to go. Number two, they're not really great with the mechanics. So then they fall back. They learn the mechanics of the game more or less, but they never come back to try to figure out how to be aggressive. How to move forward so that's one of the things i try to talk about on my videos right here and this was a great example of it uh, mad dog taking a tank that's not really known for being the tip of the spear but getting up there and using its capabilities right its strengths its dpm its rate of fire it's actually pretty darn good armor especially in a side scrape situation and is a huge part of taking out two of their best tanks on that corner and helping be the tip of the spear and push through there and for me that's just fun gameplay i that's what i enjoy in this game Right, being aggressive, attacking, getting people's faces, and beating them. That's what for me is fun in the game. All right, guys, that's all I've got. Mad Dog, thanks for sending that in. I think it was a good discussion. It really has applicability across the whole gamut of the game, though, from early, mid to late, because at some point you may be forced to move forward, and knowing how to do so is important. All right.
Thanks for coming by. I appreciate it. And we will see you.